IPv6 routers need to learn all the IPv6 routes in a network. And that starts with connected routes. How does that work? Well, this video gives all the details with plenty of CLI output. The content in this video mirrors some content you'll find in the official CERT guides, Volume 1, Chapter 29 in the first section. In this video, I talk about it in this order. We'll talk about the rules that cause a router to create connected routes. Then we'll talk about the connected routes themselves with lots of show command output. And then a related and far less important topic, local IPv6 routes. It's just a good time to talk about them, so I put them here in this video. Now, if you stick around to the end of the video, for those of you that have the books, I'll tell you how to best use the books along with this video, what you should read and what you could skip. I'll also talk to all of you about how to study and review this content with an extra exercise. Also, thanks so much for continuing to support the channel. If you're new here and haven't yet, please do subscribe. That's one way you can help support the channel, help me grow it, and get these videos out to more people. Thanks for helping out. Hey, let's jump in and look at the content now. Let's talk about the rules to start out. You've got a Cisco router. You've enabled IPv6 routing. You've got some interfaces with cables installed correctly, and the interface state is up, up. That is, the show interfaces command list, line status up, protocol status above. And then you configure IPv6 addresses on the interface, specifically, quote, routable unicast addresses, meaning a global unicast address or a unique local address. If all those things are true, the router reacts and creates connected routes for the subnets calculated based on those routable unicast addresses. And to see that in action, we'll use this demo network. We've got the core router on the right, which we'll mostly ignore. And we'll focus on the addresses configured for router R1 and router R3, as you see here in the diagram. Now, you're going to see these repeated over and over. But in this example, we'll have router R1 with this configuration, with IPv6 routing enabled. And then on the three interfaces used in this example, the IPv6 address command. And in each case, it's got a global unicast address configured. Similarly, on router R3, we've got three interfaces. It's the same interface IDs for simplicity's sake with IPv6 routing enabled and then with the IPv6 global unicast addresses configured on the three interfaces. If all those interfaces are in an up-up state, both of these routers will add connected IPv6 routes to its routing table for the subnets as defined by those addresses. Now let's dig into the command line interface. Here's a review of router R1's configuration. Then what addresses show up because of this? Well, each interface has these global unicast addresses. So the show IPv6 interface brief command will list those global unicast addresses, the second of the two addresses that you see here. This command also lists the link local addresses. And let's talk about those for a moment. Link local addresses do not form subnets or prefixes. There's no collection of addresses. There's no subnet for which the router needs to add connected routes associated with the link local addresses. But these global unicast addresses that start with two, they will imply a subnet. And those are the ones for which you're going to see these connected routes show up. So not for the link locals, but yes, for the global unicast addresses. Next up, the show IPv6 interface command. You can leave out the interface or include it as we did here for gig 00. And in particular, this command lists the full address, that is the address that you configured, but it also says subnet is, and it shows you the calculation the router did to form the prefix or subnet ID. Now, the math isn't all that hard, obviously, in this case especially, but there's the prefix that we should expect to see as a connected route or in the connected route for this interface. Then finally, if you just want to see the routes, show IPv6 route, you'll see this legend of about a dozen lines and one of the items, C for connected, tells you that if the code is a C over here on the left, that's a connected route. We've got a couple visible on this page before I ran out of space on the slide to include more. But here we've got a connected route that's associated with interface gig 00. 
and another one that's associated with gig zero one. And you can hit pause and look at the diagram and check your math to see if you agree with that result. Now, this is great in a lab when you got two or three interfaces, but in real life, if you've got tens or hundreds of interfaces on a router, that can be a bit cumbersome. So it's nice if you can do this command. Show IPv6 route connected shows you only the connected routes. So if we did that in this lab, say on router R1 here, we'd see just the three connected routes on those three interfaces. Here's the one for the top subnet off router R1 off gig 00. Here's the one for the bottom subnet off gig 01. And here's the one for the WAN subnet that connects over toward router RC off gig 002. All right, just to show some other examples, let's take a look at router R3. Here's its configuration as a reminder. It's got IPv6 unicast routing enabled. It's got the global unicast addresses configured. We'll assume the interfaces are up. So what do we have here? Show IPv6 route connected. Shows three connected routes, one for each interface. And you can hit pause and look over at these prefixes, which should match up here to the top interface, here to the bottom interface, and here to the WAN interface. Now let's talk about local routes, which honestly are far less important. So here's the deal. You configure unicast routing, you configure IPv6 addresses on the interface, those connected routes show up, but at the same time, local routes show up with this little L in the far left-hand side. And all those local routes have prefix links of slash 128. So what are they? They're there to support the internal functioning of a feature you probably don't use and is not included in CCNA, all right? Given that, though, they show up and you can't stop them from showing up. So you can mostly ignore them for real life. But what are they? They're routes to the specific IP address that you just configured for each interface. So say here on router R1, that is the abbreviated version of the address configured on interface gig 00. This is the specific IP address configured on gig 01 and so on. Now, if you did want to look at those local routes, you could always use the show IPv6 route local and just see the local routes as you see here. And again, note, they all have a slash 128 prefix links, meaning exact match of the entire address. That completes this video's topics. Now let's talk about a few things. The section in the book is in Volume 1, Chapter 29, last chapter. Section 1, it's called Connected and Local Routes. We were pretty comprehensive with that. You could skip that section and get away with it in the book. It's always helpful to read it, but this would be a place where you could pick up some time and not read it. For review and exercise, I've got an ad hoc lab video set up for you. And just to review the general idea with that, you go open the ad hoc lab video and watch the lab intro, which tells you what to do. You hit pause in the video, go perform the lab in Packet Tracer, and then watch the rest of the video if you like, which reviews what I think you should have done in the lab. But you can guess it. It would be a review and exercise on connected and local routes. Thanks for sticking until the end. Hope you got something out of this. This is actually a very important concept, although it's a relatively simple one. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell. As always, likes are probably the number one thing you can do to help me build the channel. That's always appreciated. Thanks for hanging out. Talk to you later.